trading in your, your tractor is probably the last resort. I'm never gonna give you the trade-in value for what you could sell it for on your own. I've been noticing that some tractor dealers won't accept TYM, LS, Branson, Bad Boy, or Mahindra tractors on trade. That may make it more difficult to sell trade your tractor if you own one of those brands. Are these dealers being uppity about their brand or do you think they have legit business reasons for doing so? I've never seen a car dealer not accept another brand, so why do tractor dealers do it? Now personally, I have not heard of tractor dealers not accepting other brands of tractors, but I do believe it. Um, I'm sure that they're out there and I think that there's a variety of reasons for that. I think the same thing can be said even if it's like a, a major brand, a John Deere dealer not taking in a Kubota because they don't want to see orange on their lot. Um, but let's go through what to expect when trading in your tractor. Now I sell used tractors. I don't sell brand new tractors. Um, I have bought brand new tractors. I have considered trading in tractors and trading in cars and everything else, right? So there's a lot of different variables that come into play. And typically I think that trading in your, your tractor is probably the last resort. And I'll get to that a little bit later as well. And this is also for a lot of viewers that email me on what I think that they should get for their trade in when they're turning it into a dealer. That's really an impossible question for me to answer. And the reason for that is that every single tractor dealership is set up a bit differently, right? You're gonna have dealers that price their new equipment as aggressive as possible. You're gonna have other dealers that are pricing it higher and maybe have a large amount of folks that wanna trade in equipment and so it gives them more negotiating room. So a dealer that prices their equipment really low doesn't have a lot of wiggle room on their price. And at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, they gotta make money. And so if they're giving you a really low price, a really competitive price on that new tractor, well, they're gonna have to get a low price on your trade-in to offset that, right? They need to try to, for sure, not lose any money and hopefully make some money when they go take it through service or resell it um, or whatever they're gonna do with it. So on the flip side, a higher priced dealer that has a lot more wiggle room, you would think is gonna have more wiggle room on trade-in value as well and be more keen to make a better deal for you. And you will see this with various dealerships around the country. Part of it is gonna be determined based on where you're at. If you're out in the Pacific Northwest, you are going to pay higher prices for everything. That's just kind of the way it seems to be. Generally in the Northeast, the same kind of thing is going on. Kind of in the, the middle of the US is where you're normally gonna get better pricing. Not all the time, but there's gonna be certain large John Deere dealers out there that are gonna be more known for competitive pricing and more known for higher pricing too. And so me not working for any of these other dealerships, it's really impossible for me to say what you're going to get for your tractor. And what I always tell folks is, let's just use a John Deere 1025R for an example. Take your tractor, go to Tractor House, all right, where it's probably the, the biggest conglomerate of used equipment that's for sale out there and then just plug in the John Deere 1025R, maybe do a range of hours. Say you have 300 hours on your tractor, search 200 to 400 hour tractors, and then just go through those listings. Maybe sort them from low to high. The highest price stuff is basically never gonna sell. It's gonna be the lowest half of that pricing. That's the kind of equipment that's gonna move. Make sure it's outfitted the same way, you know, with a loader and a mower deck. There's gonna be other options that could really affect the price, you know, like extra hydraulics or a self-leveling loader or, a cab, you know, that kind of thing. So try to get as apples to apples as you can and realize those are gonna be asking prices for what dealers are, are asking for that equipment. And those were most likely all trade-ins that came into them when those customers bought a new tractor. So if that's what they're asking for it, then of course they took less than that on trade. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. Another big reason that I am going to struggle to give you a good trade in value is because all the salesmen at various dealers are gonna view this stuff differently. There's no real blue book out there to tell you how much your tractor is worth. And honestly, for things like cars and, and boats that have blue books, I don't really trust them anyways. 
it's really all based off market conditions. But I have, <laughs> I've looked at a lot of tractors in my day, like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And you will get dealers that send me stuff that is through the roof, crazy price. I, I don't know, they're gonna be so underwater for that forever. And I think those kinds of tractors are the ones that wind up at an auction uh, and probably not a bad thing to buy. There's nothing wrong with them because of that, but you have some that are either desperate to make a sale or just miss the mark so bad that they're overpaying thousands of dollars and they're just never gonna recover from it. Um, so I think that goes into it a lot as well. And that's probably part of the reason why some of these dealers don't take in other brands because they are not familiar with them. They have no idea what they can sell them for. Maybe they're not well represented in whatever area that you're in. And so because they don't have that name brand recognition, they're gonna be harder to sell because of that. There could be a lot of reasons. And so I think that is at least me being somebody who sells used tractors and still does take in tractor trade-ins on occasion, I'm pretty selective myself as well. I'm also really selective on the used tractors that I take in too, but I don't turn down other brands. It's a long shot to make those numbers work though. I'm never gonna give you the trade-in value for what you could sell it for on your own. That's, that's just not how that's gonna work. I need to make money to stay in business and the same thing with these other dealers. I've taken in Coyote, I've taken in LS, I've taken in New Holland, the thing is, there's just not nearly that many that are out there compared to Kubota and John Deere. And so when you already take, well, when you're already starting with a smaller pool of tractors and then trying to factor in making the trade and everything work, that's why you don't see many of those on my channel. And so you can get more information on, on what my opinion is on, you know, a value brand versus a, a premium brand or LS versus, you know, something else and all that kind of stuff. I mean. I think that they make good tractors and at the heart of it, a lot of these are pretty simple machines, you know, like Summit that we've been showing as well. And in fact, I've got some Coyote used tractors coming in too that I think are really good values. I, <laughs> the other orange brand, you know, it's nice. They've got the twin touch pedal. Uh, we sat on uh, several of their models down at the farm show in Louisville this past year. And that's one of the differences with a premium brand versus a value brand, you know, if you want to call it that. Um, is the fit and the finish. You know, it, it, the Kubota and the John Deere are kind of, they're kind of trimmed out about as nice as you can get and, and it's a, a step below on some of these other brands. And so while that doesn't functionally affect anything, it's more of the kind of the cushy feel to it that uh, you are paying for. And so when a customer asks me, I'm, I'm pretty forthright in telling them, listen, this is what I can give you for your tractor. It's gonna be nowhere near the market value. And I would tell you the same thing that Boy, you know, if you value an extra thousand bucks even, list that thing on Facebook Marketplace, list it on Craigslist, you know, put it in. You can get a free listing if you've never listed on Tractor House before. I think they still do it. Um, you can submit an ad for a free listing on there and get nationwide coverage on their website too. So you could easily make an extra grand, probably an extra two or three grand, because for me, I've got a lot of overhead to build in. Same thing with these other dealers. And so when we bring something on the books, it immediately we have to add cost to that, not profit, but just cost, and then profit on top of that. So there's a big gap there to overcome, and so that would be my recommendation, is if you can, sell your used tractor in the open market to maximize your value, but if you're looking for convenience, it is hard to beat a trade-in. So that's my take on the subject there, folks, and hopefully this helps shed some light and maybe give you just a, another frame of reference for that decision you're probably struggling with at some point. If you have something else you'd like to add, a different perspective or a different angle to consider. We'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment down below. And when you're in the market for a new tractor attachment, something for your front end loader or your three point hitch, we'd love to earn your business. We ship tractor attachments nationwide every day of the week. See what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.